Um, yeah, so less so in pain, you know, particularly the BPC and thymus and beta-4. I think they both have an effect on pain, but usually it's not its primary effect. Usually right. I would say okay. the reason it has an effect on pain is because it's reducing inflammation. Um, and obviously that is beneficial to reducing pain. Um, and then it's also helping repair the actual tissue in, in terms of, you know, thymus and beta-4. It's helping bring new blood vessels to the area. It's helping with that, the sort of the cytoskeleton of how your cells are, are structured. Um, and then with the BPC, it's very similar as well, reducing inflammation um, and helping with sort of the cellular signalers that encourage repair. So while it does help with repair, it's not its primary function. Um, and so uh, that would definitely be, I would say, the way that uh, that it helps. And those two is, are sort of the first two products which are considered for anyone who's undergoing surgery, anyone who has you know any type of trauma. Um, or anyone who's just uh, trying to reduce some pain as a result of, you know, tennis elbow or right. uh, some like more chronic, um, you know, inflammation. I am Dr. Ross Carter with the Regenerative Warrior Podcast. Today, we'll be talking about how peptides help with inflammation. Absolutely. So, so my name is Ryan Smith. Um, I uh, helped found a, a compounding pharmacy called TaylorMade Compounding, which specializes in um, peptide pharmaceuticals uh, in the integrative space. Um, and so uh, here at TaylorMade, we've done a lot of different things, but we've really tried to, to pioneer um, and educate physicians on these, these newer uh, treatment strategies so they're able to help, help their patients with a variety of conditions and diseases. Um, and so we've been relatively successful here at TaylorMade. We've been the fourth fastest growing company in healthcare, the 21st fastest growing business in the United States. And it's all because we're, we're blessed with proximity to great physicians and prescribers. Um, and uh, and we're specifically focusing on um, these innovative compounds, which can really, really help people. So these are, are peptides that are uh, best to so for injuries like uh, muscle tears, ligament issues. Uh, is it does it have anything to do with pain or just recovery of tissue? What what area would it be classified as? Um, yeah, so less so in pain. You know, particularly the BPC and thymus and beta four. I think they both have an effect on pain, but usually it's not its primary effect. Usually right. I would say okay. the reason it has an effect on pain is because it's reducing inflammation. Um, and obviously that is beneficial to reducing pain. Um, and then it's also helping repair the actual tissue in, in terms of, you know, times and beta four, it's helping bring new blood vessels to the area. It's helping with that, the sort of the cytoskeleton of how your cells are, are structured. Um, and then with the BPC, it, it's very similar as well, reducing inflammation um, and helping with sort of the cellular signalers that encourage repair. So while it does help with repair, it's not its primary function. Um, and so uh, that would definitely be, I would say, the, the way that, uh, that it helps. And those two is, are sort of the first two products which are considered for anyone who's undergoing surgery, anyone who has you know, any type of trauma, um, or anyone who's just uh, trying to reduce some pain as a result of, you know, tennis elbow or right. uh, some more chronic, um, you know, inflammation. Sorry for the interruption again. To find out more about this speaker, become a speaker on our show, have Dr. Carter present at your event or podcast, learn more about coaching, consulting, tissue allografts, exosomes, supplements, legal help, or how to create a million dollar business card and dominate your area. We're here to help you. Just text your name and any question to 561-962-1231. Write that down. That's 561-962-1231. Or go to our website at drrosscarter.com to learn more. On with the show. All right. So we're talking about BPC-157. And the other one was called, it says, hey, again. The thymosin beta four, thymosin beta four, right? What what would yeah, you say is the difference between those two uh, peptides? Yeah, so they're both peptides which are really really 
uh, have a lot of different actions, right? So they both do a lot of different things in the body. The BPC was originally derived from essentially gastric juice. Um, it's something that's naturally produced in the body in order to reduce stomach ulcers and, and sort of help protect the GI tract. Um, and so whenever they isolated this particular synthetic fragment, the BPC-157, they found that it had a lot of different effects in the gut, um, but it also had repair and recovery effects to help, you know, repair from any type of injury faster, whether that be, you know, nerve transection or, uh, you know, bone breaks or ligament and tendon injuries like severed Achilles tendons. Um, it did a, a lot to reduce that healing time. And so, um, so you know, it's, it's definitely a natural peptide. Uh, but one that usually comes from the GI tract. The thymusin beta-4 is also one that's naturally produced in your body. Um, it's uh, one that's, I would say, the most, uh, it's the first one to be genetically upregulated whenever you get a skin cut or an injury. Um, what happens is those cells near the area of injury start to produce this peptide. Um, and this peptide basically causes new blood flow. So it causes uh, new blood vessels to come to this area of injury so that you're able to bring nutrients to help heal. Um, it also helps build that, that structure uh, to help replace any of the cells uh, in the body. And then again, it's very anti-inflammatory. Um, and so uh, it does a lot of other things too, like stem cell recruitment. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a product that does a lot. Um, and so together, these things sort of combine as a really good one-two punch that really handle about all of the issues that you, you would need to, to correct in terms of injury. So it's one that's done frequently, um, you know, preoperatively and postoperatively. Now, do you inject it at the site of injury, or is it just a is it just a subcutaneous? Yeah, we recommend subcutaneous, but a lot of people uh, in the industry still try and do it at the site of injury. Uh, most of the studies say that you know systemic administration is fine, um, but, uh, but some people think that they get better results injecting closer. Yeah, well, it would think, you know, it's closer. <laughs> so why not? Why wouldn't it work? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And, you know, uh, one of the things we see is that there's really no saturation dose for some of these receptors. So it looks like, you know, doing it as a, as a subcutaneous tends to be equally effective. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Are there, are there uh, too much that you can take or is there contraindications or, you know, things like okay. that? Are there, are there things that people need to work, uh, be careful of? Yeah, definitely. And, and uh, you know, the thymus and beta-4 in particular is one that we recommend at low doses uh, for short courses because, you know, while we talk about wound healing and wound healing angiogenesis or blood vessel creation is really important because it helps you bring everything you need to heal the wound. Uh, but in some cases, angiogenesis is a bad thing, right? We think in particular for anybody who has a cancer risk. Um, and so it's another reason that this would want to be regulated by someone who knows what they're doing. Um, and so, uh, you know, there are definitely different protocols for each of these. Um, but, uh, you know, this is the thymus beta 4 has a great safety profile. It's been given in an ID fashion at 1.2 grams um, per dose, whereas, you know, here we're using 450 micrograms, which is uh, essentially, you know, orders of magnitude lower um, and, and really presents not a huge risk profile by still having a great therapeutic benefit. And perfect. And how does uh, someone know this stuff is uh, working when they take something that helps with, you know, tissue uh, repair? I mean, how are they going to yeah. know it's repairing if it's internal? Definitely. And so it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, to quantify because um, yeah. a lot of times you're, you're basically judging based off your physician saying, you know, wow, this clinically you, you are functionally better than all my other patients. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there are, there are some other markers that you can take, right? Some inflammatory markers to show that, Hey, you're reducing these things, but a lot of times it's definitely the clinical presentation and, and, and how that compares to people who weren't on the therapy. <laughs> so is there like a, uh, like a multivitamin of peptides yet? I mean, have they just created it? So it just has a mixture of all the great ones. You know, just one it's like a multivitamin. Do they have that yet? They don't. I, you know, I, I would definitely have my ideas on which ones to include, but, uh, I think but so. um, there's got what do they, are there contraindications or things that don't mix well? I mean, so like, do you yeah. have to take each one of these individually? You know, so um, from a pharmacy perspective, uh, we cannot advise recommending mixing syringes of products um, <laughs> because we're not sure how they would interact. Okay. Um, but with that being said, you know, we do have the testing on some of them. For instance, we compound the PPC and Dynasty Beta 4 together. Um, we have stability testing on those. We do that with a couple other products as well. 
Um, and so, but one of the biggest things is there's, there's really no, I would say, contraindication to multiple peptides at the same time, um, or, you know, e even injecting them, you know, back to back to back. Most of these would not have any uh, interaction with each other. Right. And, and their half-lives are, are, what, about a month. So, I mean, you would, if you, if you were having a problem, you could, you could stop them and they would slowly decrease the effect, right? Exactly. Uh, you know, the half-lives are very, very short, especially compared to traditional drugs. And so, um, you know, side effects are, are much more limited uh, versus, you know, your typical medications.